We, the members of the Concord Fortress of Hope Church, trust and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are commissioned to teach and preach Christ to the hurting, needy, and disenfranchised in the Ruskin-Hickman Mills area and its surrounding communities, and are committed to raising the spiritual and physical standards of living of all we touch through the power of the Holy Spirit, trusting in the Lord with all our hearts and all our ways acknowledging Him as He directs our paths. Good morning, Concord. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are excited to enter into worship together. If you are new here, please click on the connection card in the link uh, below in the comment section. Uh, we want to get a little information from you and follow up with you, but you belong here like everybody else. So welcome. Also, Concord, this has been a long week. It has been a trying week. We are fighting COVID-19. We are fighting for our civil rights. Um, it is a civil war going on right now in the world. And we're so glad that you guys are still praying for people, that you guys are still evangelizing people and still telling people that Jesus is the way in spite of everything that's going on. So we thank you for that. And we're excited to enter into worship together because I don't know about you, but I need Jesus this morning in a way like never before. So let's worship together.
What a tremendous blessing uh, we have had uh, in worship together. Uh, as we have listened to music and uh, uh, as we have uh, celebrated the very presence of God in worship together. Today I wanted to come to you and really address some things in a little bit different way. Things are changing around us so quickly. Uh, and some of us um, uh, have anger, but I don't want you to fret. I want you to know that God is active in this moment, that God is working in this moment, that God is ever present in whatever we do. And that's why the text that we are going to share today really talks about how God is active in the life of this particular gentleman, this, this particular man, this man of a unique skill set, this man who ultimately becomes a major player in scripture. And sometimes we miss it. So in uh, John, uh, the third chapter, is talking about a man named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus not only becomes that key player, but also allows God to move in circumstances that are uncomfortable. Look at what this text says, starting with the first verse. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher that comes from God for no one can do these things, these signs that you do unless God is with them. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is a powerful phrase as we look at uh, what does it mean for God to show up in uncomfortable space? What does it mean to be uncomfortable with the settings that are happening and not really know uh, what is going on? Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to fret, don't want you to fear. I want you to know that God is ever present. That not only is he ever present, but he framed the moment to his glory, even before you and I were born. This text really does start out talking about a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. I think it's really interesting that the text starts that way and, and not just talks about a man named Nicodemus, but it talks about who he was or what kind of person he was. It says that he was a ruler of the Jews, literally meaning he was not only a Pharisee, but now he is a member of the Sanhedrin. The, the Sanhedrin really has its birth in numbers. Uh, uh, when Moses is up day and night uh, counseling the people of God, so much that he is almost about to destroy himself. You know, you can serve people so much that you can wear yourself out. And his father-in-law comes and his father-in-law says, Moses, uh, you're gonna have to do something about this because you can't keep going like this. And God speaks to Moses and says, find me 70, 70 men, 70 elders uh, in the congregation, in the nation. And I will teach them and, and, and raise them up, rather, and raise them up so that they can share. And you don't have to bear the load of this thing by yourself. Because, brothers and sisters, you can try to manage things all by yourself. And you will find out even in your home and in your, uh, on your job, the more you try to do by yourself, the more overwhelmed you will become. And that's where Moses is in this text. So when the text says that he is a ruler 
of the fair uh, uh, and one of the Pharisees. He is a part of the Sanhedrin. And we're going to talk shortly about why that's important. But at the moment, it's important because he is learning some things, even as he is in the Sanhedrin that is pressing against his theology, that's pressing against his idea of who God is and how God is showing up. Because it says that he is a ruler, and then it says that he comes to Jesus by the cover of night. Because, brothers and sisters, it is critical. It is our critical assessments when we are alone that allows us to frame and rethink what it means to trust God in human spaces. To know that God is going to show up, that he is a very present help in times of trouble, that, that, that sometimes our ideas of who he is changes when we spend time and wrestle with who God is. And so not only had he been wrestling with who Je uh, Jesus is, but the Sanhedrin had been wrestling and having conversations about who Jesus is. That's why never run from hard conversations. Never, never run from hard conversations. I know they make us uncomfortable, but in those hard conversations, that's where God is molding us. I say that because in this moment, uh, America and Kansas City is wrestling with some hard questions. Some hard questions about what it means not only to trust God, but what does it mean uh, to create opportunities for hurting and broken people? What does it mean? What does it mean uh, to wrestle with uh, people of color and people who are black, who have been marginalized? What does it mean to wrestle with their relevance? That's why this is not just a word for people of color, for black people. This is a word for uh, the entire community because brothers and sisters, in this moment, we are being forced to wrestle with the reality of unique difference. We are being forced to wrestle with the notion of privilege. We are being challenged to wrestle with the notion of human value, human meaning. I believe that we are in one of the most pivotal times in American history and in human history and in American history as this country uh, being led by young people are sharing this notion that you will not continue to marginalize me the way that you have been marginalized. They are wrestling with this notion. And this is a notion that has appeared in darkness. It's a notion that has appeared in the darker moments of what it means to be a part of this country. The darkness of the death of people of color whether it be Sandra Bland, Trayvon Martin, these young people, and because of the technology, are challenging the powers that be and are saying that even though this is in the dark, uh, there are lessons to be learned in darkness. Because here in this text, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by the cover of night because he is now wrestling with things differently. Conversations are being had. And not only are conversations being had now intellectually and spiritually, he is redefining how God in Jesus shows up in human space. That's why brothers and sisters, don't be dismayed. Sometimes God allows the darkness to come. He allows 
darkness to speak to our lives and in our lives. Because sometimes there are lessons that can only be learned in darkness. Matter of fact, the lessons that you have learned in your life are not because that you have always learned them in the amazing, wonderful times, but in the dark crevices of your life, in moments of failure, in moments of agony, and in moments of despair, God didn't break you. You weren't broken by the moments. You felt sometimes, come on, that you would be broken in the moment. But if you had not had that moment, that journey in darkness, you would not have been able to confront the issues of your own personal hurts and your own personal pains and your own personal agony. That's why repentance is so important in the word of God. It is this idea that I'm willing to address and to allow God to address my shortcomings. It is in the darkness that we say, God, forgive me of my wrong and forgive me of my sin. It is in the darkness. It is in the darkness that God begins to reshape us. That's why uh, one of my uh, favorite poems uh, or favorite quotes is by a woman by the name of Sarah Williams. Sarah Williams says this. She says that I don't fear the dark because I love the stars. That quote simply says this, that it's in darkness that God can provide just enough light. <laughs> that God will give you just enough light. That you will be transformed and you will be changed. That's why, brothers and sisters, don't, don't, don't fear the dark. There is some beauty in the dark. There is transformation in the dark. There is some hope in the dark. You can even find rest in the dark. You can find some peace in the dark. But brothers and sisters, know that the dark does not last always. Because Jesus says that he is the light of the world. That's a wonderful piece. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus by the cover of night. Because it was his journey through the darkness that would empower him in a way that he would never be the same and his faith context would never be the same. He would see it different. He would walk in it different. Because that's the power about our brokenness, brothers and sisters, when we give it to Jesus. When we realize that we are unfit and unworthy and that we have fallen short of God's glory, that now God can build us in a new way. He can restore us in a new way. He now will use the lessons that broke us in a way that those lessons build us. So Nicodemus comes by the cover of night. And this is what he says when he gets to Jesus. Rabbi or teacher, we know that you're sent of God. Because if you were not, you would not be able to do some of the things that you're able to do. Listen to that. He says, we know that you're sent by God. In other words, there had been real conversations with the Sanhedrin, with the Jewish leadership about the relevance of Jesus. You know, people will say whatever they want in private spaces. They'll tell you how much they hate you. But, and they'll tell other folk how much they hate you. They'll tell other folk how meaningless you are. But brothers and sisters, that's why you don't need to 
be hopeless. Because though they may say some things about you, like they did Jesus in private, let the work of your faith speak for you. Let the work of how God is showing up and showing out in your life. Let that be the real barometer. Don't worry about what people are saying about you in public. Because God may be using the what they're saying about you in public in a more intimate way to his glory. That's what's so powerful about this. Nicodemus literally says as he has come through the dark and as he has come through the night in the midst of the stars, he says, we've been talking about you. And this is what we say about you when we're in our group. That he must be sin of God. He must be sin of God. And this is important because, brothers and sisters, it is ultimately Nicodemus who, when Jesus, the night before his crucifixion, is taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. When he is taken in Isaiah, when it talks about judgment hall to judgment hall, it is a prophetic word that Jesus before he dies, that those of his faith would berate him, would marginalize him. And guess who was in that space? Nicodemus. Because Nicodemus is the one who said before You charge him guilty. Let him speak for himself. Isn't that powerful, brothers and sisters? It is is this idea. It is to know that God will work some things in your past. That you don't know what the blessings are going to be in your future. Here Nicodemus has come by the cover of night and He has said, this is what the Sanhedrin, the folk who in public say they hate you. This is what they're saying in private. Says he must be of God. He must be of God. That's why brothers and sisters, don't worry about what folk are saying. To my young black brothers and sisters who are marching, don't worry about it. And I know you're not. Don't worry about what folk think. You keep marching. Don't worry about folk who come into the space to destroy while you're in the space for righteousness. For rightness. You keep marching. You keep doing what it is because because in this moment, let me tell you what's happening. There are some new conversations about how black folk are being marginalized and that's not coming from my generation or from those that are older than I am that is coming from your boldness to stand up for not only yourself but for all of those who look like you that are marginalized. I cannot tell you how many conversations I've been having. Um, I've got calls from leaders of Kansas City, not just black leaders, but white leaders that are asking the question, what, 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 can, what can we do? It, it is not just finding fault in uh, uh, how you are marching. No, it's not finding fault at all. It is the embracing and saying, wait a minute, we're hearing And having a different conversation because of these young people and how they're standing up. One of the reasons why I don't want you to worry about naysayers. And don't worry about folk who are 
even coming into the space who are interlopers. And all an interloper is is a person who's coming into your space with a different agenda. Come on in here. People who are coming into your space saying that they're with you only to come into the space and destroy. Just know wherever God is doing something real and palatable and tangible and transformative, There will always be voices in that space. Come on, y'all. There will always be voices in that space who say they're with you, but really are wolves in sheep's clothing. Never forget that even in the disciples, there were wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm. Never forget, never forget. How Judas came to Jesus and always made it known as one of the disciples that he was with him. Only to find out that it'll only take one kiss of how much he loved Jesus. that would start the process of his crucifixion. So never be surprised when there are interlopers. (laughs) Never be surprised when there are people with other agendas who are coming into the space and trying to marginalize you. Don't you let, don't you listen, and let folk redirect conversations towards Those that are coming into the space to destroy because it is a part of what it means to make a difference. That there will always be people that will backstab you. One of my favorite songs of all time is a song by uh, 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 the OJs. And the OJ said this, they're smiling in my face all the time. They want to take my place backstabbers don't you ever think you're not gonna get through life and do amazing and powerful things and transformative things without back Mm. stabbers I cannot tell you how many people that I've pastored over the years and who have run up to me and say pastor I'm with you only to find out that they really didn't love me. They wanted to get what they wanted to get out of what God had done and is doing and has done through the life of our church. Backstabbers, don't you ever think that great things don't come out of troublesome tensions so he comes to him comes to him by the cover of night he comes to him by the cover of night not only does he come to him by the cover of night get this y'all um uh uh uh, he says uh this is what they're saying about you that you are sin of god not only are you sin of god uh, but you couldn't even do the things that you do if god's hands weren't on you to all of those, young and old. And listen, I've seen white folk bringing their children out. Boy, you know, you, you want to know, you, you want to know if this is a move of God or not? Come on in here, y'all. Walk with me for just a second. This moment that we're in is a move of God. Now we're seeing uh, white families bring their children to stand up for folk like George Floyd, Tamir Rice, when there was all of this tension around that the police wouldn't do what they did. And brothers and sisters, we're making this about the police. Be careful not to make this about the police. 
This is a statement about a culture that has marginalized and systematically and systemically has created the context of hatred for people of color, especially now in an age they shouldn't be used, they can't be used in the way they used to be used. But now we're seeing white people, Asian folk, Latino, Native American, people from India who are saying all around the globe, all around the planet, people that are black all around the planet saying, no, 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 no. They have value. They have meaning. They have substance. And we stand with them. This is a God moment we're in. We're in a God moment, brothers and sisters, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of global tensions around economics. now arises out of the ashes the relevance of people who look like me and it's primarily led by young voices <laughs> so not only does he come to jesus by the cover of night now it morphs into another conversation about relevance, about transformative reality. Look at what he says. Look at what he says. Jesus says in the third verse, most assuredly I say to you, unless... A man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. My last point is this. He fights through the opinions of others. He fights through in this God moment. He fights through to become a real servant of the most high God through Jesus but Jesus has to ask, has to make this statement to him as he says, we know who you are. We know the work that you've done and you've got to be sent by God in this God moment. He says, you can be in a God moment and not have God. God can use you so and you still not be his child. You can change folks' lives with how you stand up for people and still miss the mark. And that's why Jesus says this. After he says, after Nicodemus says, we know you're of God because we know what you've done. And I'm coming to you by night because I need to get a little bit more. I need to get a little bit more from you. That the conversations about you aren't enough. And he says, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, Jesus says that I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Don't miss this moment, brothers and sisters. Don't miss this moment, young people. Don't miss this moment. Be thankful that God is using you in this profound, transformative way in American history. And I believe that this is such a transformative moment that it has the ability to make a shift that we won't be able to go back from if... You stand boldly in this moment. And Jesus said this, unless you're born again, as much as I'm going to use you in this 
transformative moment. That's why I've been saying, I don't know if this means that Jesus has come in this moment. That's been a whole lot of talk because people want to know because all of the signs seem to be there. This must be the time that Jesus is coming. Brothers and sisters, all that I know is that the end time has been since the cross, since the resurrection of Jesus, when God touched him and raised him from the dead. We have been in the last days. And so I don't want you to get stuck on the last days piece because the last days may mean this afternoon. It may mean a month from now, a year from now, a decade from now, a hundred years from now, a millennium from now all I know is this brothers and sisters when Jesus said I don't care what you've experienced me and how I've used you and how the conversation has shifted unless you embrace me unless a man is born again he will not see the kingdom of God the question is You're doing all of this struggle, and it's, a lot of it is by night. But don't come through the darkness. And God has profoundly used you, and you end up with nothing eternally. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Keep fighting. You're doing the right, you're doing the right things. You're fighting the right fights. There's going to come a time when there will be those, and the word of God tells us that there will be those who will say, Lord, look at the work that I did. I raised the dead. I healed the sick. I even preached in your name. And Jesus is going to Say to them, though I used you and many came to know me, that the world is better because you existed. Out of all that you've done, depart from me because I never knew you. What a chilling word, brothers and sisters. How how many times we just work in church so that folk can hear us sing? How often do we preach just so that folk can see how amaz- what an amazing orator you are? <laughs> but brothers and sisters, there will be many who preach, many who sing, Many who usher, many on the deacon board, many in pulpits, and God will say, depart from me, for I never knew you. And all you have to do is, brothers and sisters, confess your sins to him, believe that he died on the cross and that he is God and that the Father touched him and raised him from the dead and now you have eternal life. And now allow him to, with great intention, to remold you and reshape you to his glory. That's what happens to Nicodemus. Not only is he the one that said, you need to hear Jesus. You need to know his works. But it is the same Nicodemus who comes to Jesus and he says, to Pilate, give me his body. He didn't start out intending that, but he is the one who said to Pilate, give me his body so we can give him an appropriate burial. He did not miss his moment of transformation. My question to you is, will you miss your moment? Give your heart to Jesus. Let's pray. God, we bless you. We thank you for...
these amazing people that are out in the streets and they are struggling and they are fighting for the dignity of a people. Now I pray that they find their worth in you as well. Don't let their work be in vain, but let it be to the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Now, uh, we're going to, uh, because this is the first Sunday, we are going to have the Lord's Supper. And so, uh, if you have uh, your juice, wafers, or water and bread, or water and crackers, I talked to one member and they said, Pastor, we just did uh, water and goldfish, the, the little crackers. I said, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. So it doesn't matter. So I pray that you have time and that you're going to get uh, 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 the water and the crackers so that we can share in the Lord's Supper together. Because it's on this occasion, that we remember the work of Jesus. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me as often as you do it. You do show forth my death, burial, and resurrection. And when they were set, Jesus sent two of his disciples into the city, said, there you'll find a man. Tell him that the master has need of his chamber. And when they entered, they prayed. God, we bless you for this day that we are able to commemorate and celebrate and reflect upon the price you, you paid in Jesus on the cross that we might have a relationship with you. Let us always be mindful of how divinity, how you sacrificed for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Then they took the wine and they passed it. They took the bread and they passed it. Bread represents Christ that was broken on Calvary's hill. Let us commune together. Then they took the wine and they passed it. The wine represents the shed blood of Jesus. The word of God tells us without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission to sin. So Jesus dies for our sake. Let us commune together. Then they left in power. For there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath that flood. We lose all our guilt and shame. We thank you for being with us in this sermon. Remember, keep fighting, young people. Keep fighting, black America. Keep creating partnerships with white folk, Asian folk, Latino folk, Native Americans, Indians, that God might be glorified in this transformative moment now Brandon's going to come and share a few announcements all right Concord it's that time and part of the service where we're able to give back to God a portion of which he's given to us with everything going on in the world we know that Jesus is still good and we want to continue to be generous as well so it's a few different ways you can give. You can give the traditional route by mailing in a check um, to P.O. Box 9781, and that's KCMO 64134. Um, you can give online at the seafordhope.org website. You can even text to give now, and that number will pop up on the screen. And a lot of you requested Cash App, and we heard you, and we have that available now. You can give through Cash App as well. No matter how you give or whatever portion you give, as long as you do it with a cheerful heart, it is glory unto the Lord. So let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. 
Father God, thank you so much for blessing us, God. Thank you for meeting us in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of uh, marching, in the midst of protests, in the midst of police brutality. Everything going on, God, you have been good to us, God, and we're grateful for that. And now we give back to you what you first gave to us, and we pray that it be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week, Concord.